Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled council meeting for November 4th, 2019 at 7 p.m. And Mr. Kitko, when you're ready, sir, for the roll call. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilman Shammy. Here. Councilwoman Hopkins. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. All present. Thank you, sir. And tonight's invocation will be by Vice Mayor Lindsay. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you once again to do the business of the city, Lord. We ask you these things in Jesus' name. We also ask you tonight, Father, to keep a hand on the administration, on our firefighters, our military, and our police officers, Father. Give us the wisdom to do the business of the city in your grace and your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll need uh, action on the uh, work session minutes for uh, October 21st, 2019. So moved. Thanks. Did you get it? Yep. Okay. Yeah. No questions? No questions. Council, when you're ready, sir. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. And Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Thank yes. you, sir. Yep. And then we'll also need motion for the regular scheduled council meeting of October 21st. So, second. First and second. Who got first, Shammy? Shammy. Shammy. Ready? Yes, sir. Sorry. All right. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. And Councilman Shammy? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. And moving on to communications. And then none. Dropping to the city manager for Good evening, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public city administration. I'd like to share with you the city manager report. Uh, under informational items, new building update, uh, we do have to go ahead and remove that uh, abatement on the first and second floor. As we discussed in the work session, there is a price range out there right now, uh, ranging from $4,883 uh, up to $6,583. That's about a $1,700 difference. Uh, that is happening to do with, and I'm still trying to get an answer for this, um, that they're called clear air, clear, clearance air samples. So after they go in, they have to make sure the air is clean. We may need those or we may not. If we do not need them, the price will be 4883 If we do need those, uh, the, the sample, the clearance samples, that will be 6583 uh, With that, also with the new building, we do have an updated Gantt chart coming. We also have a rendering uh, of the, what the building is going to look like interior. Uh, that should be uh, putting the finishing touches up on it as well. Uh, and this Wednesday at 1 o'clock, we have a meeting with the wire vendor. And they're going to come in and they're going to look at how we're going to wire the place for technology with our Cat 5, Cat 6 cables, however they choose to do. Uh, that is something that we also need to get done. Um, so we have a meeting with them on November 6th. Uh, 2024 Capital Improvement Plan Timeline. Please note this is solid and it is not changing. Um, work session request for CIP and LED change out proposal. By about a month ago, maybe a month and a half, I submitted to council a uh, packet from Miami Valley Lighting that has to deal with our current lighting setup and also a proposal to change out to all LEDs. Um, that particular project is about nine, uh, about nine, $10,000 uh, that we'll have to pay one time fee. Uh, we'll get more into it later, but Miami Valley uh, Lighting is paying 93% of that change out. We would be responsible for the remaining 7%, which is about that $10,000. <laughs> so I would like to have a work session on that and also for the CIP. I am requesting a, uh, a work session on uh, Tuesday, November 12th, or Wednesday, no November 13th, or Thursday, November 14th. We are also able to uh, 
select more than one of those dates if council feels as though we need to go into two work sessions opposed to one. Council, any feedback on those dates? I have a prior meeting scheduled on Thursday, November 14th. The other two days will work, whatever council decides. <clears throat> also, the 13th, I believe, is the uh, second Wednesday of the month. So that would be the Crime Watch meeting night. I believe they're still meeting one last time. I thought they were done. And I think November is our last meeting. November is our last yes. one more. But I would have it at the fire station if it, that, okay. Wednesday, was that Wednesday. Was that Just wanted to mention sure. that. I'm fine. Which, honestly, the fire station, Chief, if you're okay with it, might be better because they have the smart board. Oh, there you go. And we can throw stuff on the projector if needed. You said the 14th is bad for you, sir? Yes, I've already got another meeting. Okay, scheduled. so I'm fine for the 12th or the 13th. The 14th is good for me. The other two are not. All right, so one and two is going to either have to. Chris won't be here that night. I won't. I'll miss out. <laughs> Just let me know. <laughs> All right, so we'll shoot for the 13th at the firehouse. Do you guys think we'll need more than one? Or is just knock it out on one? Do we got to go through the whole CIP at that point in time? Which, I'll be honest with you, it's the first round of the CIP. We need to approve it for the budgetary uh, work, but it's going to get slashed when we do the 2020 operating budget. What, what time are we looking at, sir? Whatever's best for anyone. Uh, six o'clock, good with everybody or not? Six. Uh, six is fine. Your yeah. work schedule, I mean. Yeah, six is fine. On the 12th? Yeah. On the 13th, 13th. I believe On the said. 13th? You said 6 p.m.? Yeah, at the fire station, correct? Is that what we're going to shoot for? Yeah. Fire station? Yeah. That's over on Church Street. <laughs> okay, so we need a, do you need a motion for that? Uh, you guys should probably do it, yeah. yeah. So moved. Second. Second. As vice mayor, then Mr. Cook? Yes. All right, Vice Mayor Lindsay. Uh, he said, "Oh yes." Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. And Councilman Cook. Yes. All right, pass. Thanks, sir. Mr. Bridge. Okay, moving on with that, uh, now that the meeting's been set, um, the subsequent events because of that, we'll have the legal ad for the work session appear in the Springfield New Sun on 11-7 or 11-8. Uh, we'll have a resolution to enter that CIP on 11-18 of 19. Uh, legal ad for the public hearing adoption in the Springfield New Sun will appear on 11-19-19 and actually 12-2 of 19 council will actually vote on the CIP. Normally resolutions we can introduce and vote those on uh, the same uh, agenda, but this one we'll have to introduce, let it sit for a couple of weeks so the uh, public has a chance to inspect it. We can come back December 12th, uh, December 2nd, which is the first meeting in December, and council would actually vote on the adoption of that CIP. Um, with that being said, the 2020 operating budget adoption will be on 3 9 or 20 or 3 23 20, but we will be uh, aiming for the 3 9 20. We do need to have our <coughs> 2020 appropriation budget by the end of March, correct? That'll be March 31st, so we need to have that done. We'll do a temporary budget uh, around probably uh, sometime in December to get us through for the first couple months of January. Uh, same thing we do every year. Uh, under the next thing, I am question, requesting a consent question. motion. Mr. Mr. Bridge. Oh, yeah, Mr. I'm Vice sorry. Mayor. Sure. A uh, question on the operating budget. Is yep. there any way that, that uh, when we do the, like, the two-month extension, we can move this into... Uh, <laughs> like doing it in February every year instead of having to do a, a two-month budget and then go back and do it again in March? We would love, that is one of the things we are. We, I would love for our budget to be up and going January 1. We get it all done beforehand. Um, we couldn't meet that deadline this year. Historically, the city does a temporary appropriations budget. I don't like them either. Uh, but the, it all, it, it, it comes down to, we have to do the CIP first, and then that has to sit for three months before we actually introduce the budget. So we need to get the CIP done. Can the CIP be moved like June or July then? <laughs> That's something we'll have to, it comes down to us. It's, it comes down to us getting it to you in those okay. time frames. You know? okay. Not all the times it can happen like that, right. uh, given the short staff that we have. But I talked to Debbie about that. We do want to start our budget a little earlier for 2020. Okay, thank you. Sorry to, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Ms. Watson. My goal always is to, when I do temporary appropriations, they are as close to the actual ones as 
most of the time I won't have to change any. And I'm, it's a learning process for me here because this is the really the first time I'm doing the whole thing. But you will, going forward in years, yes, the, the speed it up. you know, but doing it temporary doesn't hurt anything. I mean, it's not, it, it should be as close to the real thing. You know, you're just tweaking a little bit by what, um, because if you try to do the permanent appropriations before the first year, you really don't know what the end of the year has, has happened. So you have to wait till everything's done um, and get all those totals so you know what you can do then going forward. Because at the end of the year, you amend your uh, certificate of estimated resources with the county. And once you do that, then you get the actual figures you're allowed to do your appropriations on. So, but as, as we go forward and we, I get better and better, but yes, they will be as close to the actual as they won't be far apart at all. Great. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'm seeking a, uh, requesting a consent motion, and that is to send a termination of services letter to our current city law director. Um, section 6.03 of the charter states that the department law is created and, quote, shall be headed by a director of law who shall be appointed or terminated by the city manager with consent of council, end quote. So in order for me to send the uh, letter of termination services, I have to have permission for council to do so. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. I move to uh, let Mr. Bridge send this termination letter. Second. And however he prefers to write it. I second. Council, any discussion? When you're ready, sir. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Councilman Cobb? Okay, I didn't know if you heard me. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't, I don't agree with the appointment. No one's been appointed yet. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, if, if I pass this, it gives you the authorization to appoint somebody. No, it has, that has to still be approved by council via ordinance. Councilman Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. And Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. It passes seven to zero. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Bridge, back to you, sir. Yep, uh, upcoming legislation, health insurance renewal. Uh, it says emergency ordinance possible. We're probably gonna need emergency ordinance on our health insurance renewal and employment of a new law director, uh, which will, uh, could be coming uh, as soon as next council meeting or it could be coming in the beginning of January. Uh, but that will be an ordinance measure as well. All right, thank you, sir, very much. Mm -hmm. um, we drop down to um, okay. comments from members of the board. Let's do that, that's not a good idea. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Yes, please, if you don't mind. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice. Uh, I have some questions about the leaf pickup. I saw that they're supposed to pick up the leaves on my street next week and we're supposed to get them out this week. But I saw them go by sweeping the leaves that nobody had out today. So does that mean they're still gonna come around next week to get the leaves? Yeah, or, Mr. Titko. Yes, we'll be getting it on the normal schedule. We're just trying to stay ahead of any kind of rain coming in. We're just ahead of schedule currently. Okay, I didn't want to try and get something out too early and have them all blow away or get. No, no I get you. Yeah, you get them out this week for next week. We'll be buying that same area next week. Okay, just want to make sure. And another question I have: uh, Last year I read so much. I think it was in the Dayton paper about there. They have ordinances. You can't put them in the street. You have to have them up on the grassy area because of the dangers of wet leaves and because of starting fires and a bunch of other things. And it was my understanding that our leaf sweeper can't get up to that area. Is that correct, the grassy area? It, it can get up there if there's not vehicles parked around the leaves. We would probably be able to get most if they were left on the curb lawn. However, we just have them on the street. We haven't had that issue yet. 
Um, but that but that allows us with our reach to be able, even if there was a few vehicles piled or parked, we're still able to get some leaves. <clears throat> but we haven't had any kind of hazards. Well, if they're with parked leaves. over the top of them, how are you getting them? No, those are the ones we're not getting regardless, oh, even if okay. we were hand doing them. But, but we're able to reach around cars and maybe swing in a little bit between cars. Okay. Because it says put them two feet out from the curb. And if I would do that and my neighbors would do that, and the leaves usually are two to three feet wide, we you wouldn't it, even have it's a, room it's for a one car that, to get Yeah, it's a standard that we know most people don't abide, and they go right to the gutter, wind, rain, weather, vehicle driving on them. We just try to put them there so if it does rain, it run, the water runs down without carrying everything. Yeah. And But we know it's, we, we ask for a little more, but they don't get that far. Okay. So you don't think it would be better to pick them up off the grassy area? Um, we haven't had an issue with it in the 20 years I've been doing with the leaf pickup. We haven't run into any kind of issues. Um, we, ha we do possibly have issues coming up regarding leaf pickup, but we'll be bringing those at a later date. But we haven't run into anything that I'm aware of. Okay. It's just a lot easier to get them to the grass area than a foot away from the curb for me. <laughs> sure. I understand. Okay. Just that's all the questions the I think I had. Right, because I'm picturing it right. So right now we have a pile of leaves on the curb. Car parks there, parks right there. We can still swing in and get it. For the, most, it's on for the, the most, it's on the curb. I mean, you can't control who parks in front of your house. There's a car there and the leave piles there. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Any questions or comments? Thank you. Linda Eggleston, Nowakowski, 317 South Main Street. <clears throat> um, living on Main Street, I have no parking in front of my house. And my access to my home is through the alley between church and Main. The exit on the south end of that alley to turn to head into town is a 270 degree turn, and it's dangerous. The only reason I say that is because there's a business on Madison that regularly blocks the alleyway so that you can't get out in or out the alley from Madison. This, this week I was leaving and I didn't bother to look to see if the alley was blocked. And there was a vehicle combination with a huge RV and then a huge trailer that blocked almost a, three quarters of the block there. So there was no way you could get out that way. There are, I called the non-emergency number and reported it, but there's got to be something done that they don't block that access. Um, just a comment on a, a problem area there. Mr. Kitko. Um, are you talking about behind uh, the church? The uh... No, it's... There's a, what, I don't know what the name of the business the is. The Primacy Customs? Are you talking about the body shop? Body, body shop. Place. Oh, I'm behind Christie's, place. that yeah, building over Christie's. That alley there. Yeah. And it gets, it gets blocked at least once a week. Oh, is, okay. Yeah, McIlvain Racing. Okay, yeah, I'm unaware of that one. What was the name of the place? McIlvain. It's right, it's right next to, right it, next share, it, shares, yeah. it shares the building with Studio. I, I got it. I, I, think I, I think I visually know it. Sorry, the first I heard of it. Well, okay, it, no, I, I just it's a it's a problem, and there are five of us who live there right now who have only access is that alley. Yeah, and you would use that if there's a fire back there, chief. You would have to take the trucks back there too, wouldn't you? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh yeah, you're not going to get into the other end of the alley. Thank you for letting us know. We'll, we'll I'll take a look at it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, Mr. Bridger, Mr. Kiko, could the city put up new parking signs in that alley? Or usually, not? Usually there's not room to even park in an alley, period. We'll check it out before yeah. we make. Parking in the alley is in front of 
front of It's blocking the whole alley. Blocks it. We will go down and visually take mm -hmm. a look at it. They're parking on the street then is what you're saying? On the street and blocking the alley? Well, it's on Madison, and I don't care if they park as long as they don't block the alley. Hmm. Grenade. Well, quite honestly, I, in that particular part of town and how it's zoned, I'd be concerned of what they're parking there. Yeah. I mean, it's probably zoned central business or general business. Oh, it if, it's light, if it's light, if it's light, yeah, if it, that's that's the issue. So let us go down and get a visual on it. We'll see how we move forward. What was you saying, Ms. Davidson? They park on Madison blocking the alley. Okay. And also Okay, I, I would think if they're parking on the street and blocking that, that the sheriff's office could, could deal with that problem because they're blocking access. Well, the bigger problem is the type of vehicle they're probably parking there to begin with. Right. Well, they, they have a big trailer that they haul their, uh, I think it's a uh, rail, dragster. what is it? Dragster, dragster yes. Sure. Uh, they got a, like a 30 foot dragster, I think they stick in this thing. So, like the, I said, uh, go down and take a look at it. But it, it's safety and it's, it's fire uh, safety also. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. My name is Mike Varner. I live in German Township. I'm running for Clark County Sheriff. Uh, the election isn't until next November. And thank you for allowing me a few minutes to briefly speak to you. I spent 25 years with the city of Springfield serving uh, a good number of the people in Clark County. I have many years of experience in dealing with municipal law enforcement, which is what obviously uh, New Carlisle has going on here. So I have that, that background of understanding municipal law enforcement. I'm also the only person who's running for sheriff who's a military veteran. I served in the Marine Corps. There are three people running. I don't have anything negative to say about them as far as their character goes. They served or, or continue to serve our community with uh, pride and integrity, and you can't fault them for that. But there are some issues I think that need to be discussed when it comes to being the chief law enforcement officer of the county, that you should have the credentials to back that up. I am the only candidate running who has a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and a master's degree in criminal justice. My master's degree is from the University of Cincinnati. That's the third best criminal justice school in the nation. I went to the FBI National Academy. That is the premier law enforcement leadership school in the world. To give you some perspective of how difficult it is to get into that school, less than half of 1% are invited to attend the FBI National Academy. So it was a great honor to be allowed to, uh, to go there. It's a fantastic leadership school. I'm also the only candidate that attended the Police Executive Leadership College. I spent 11 years serving Clark County on the local emergency planning committee as the vice chair for eight years and also with the uh, Clark County Emergency Management. When I was promoted to lieutenant in Springfield, I went to my captain and said, I want some more administrative responsibilities. So that's where I was assigned. I worked afternoons as a lieutenant, but those duties were on my off-duty time where I was investing in Clark County. I feel that if you're running for sheriff, that we should consider what has been invested by the candidates. I paid for my own college education. It didn't come from taxpayer dollars. I went and uh, sought out these uh, prestigious law enforcement uh, education and leadership training. It's not like the rich kid on the, can on, the, on the playground waving the candy bar with all the children that can't afford a candy bar. Anyone running or wanting to be sheriff had the opportunity to get the higher education. If you want to be a chief of police somewhere, don't even bother applying if you don't have a master's degree. They usually say you have to have a bachelor's degree, but they won't hire you if you don't have a master's degree. They won't hire you unless you have at least 10 years of command experience. But in Ohio, the chief law enforcement officer for the county, the state standards say that you have to have at least a GED and one of three things, two years as a sergeant or above, an associate's degree in criminal justice, 
or a bachelor's degree in anything. So a young person could graduate high school, go to Clark State, and get a two-year entry-level degree, which is admirable, but then he or she could run for sheriff. I'm saying we need someone to uh, have a higher qualifications to be the sheriff in Clark County. We have serious and complex problems that need someone who has that uh, investment and education and training and background to deal with it. I've been looking at some of the issues and talking with people in the community about what they feel are concerns with the, the law enforcement in, in, in New Carlisle. There's obviously a huge drug problem, <coughs> also problems with homeless. And I have the experience and background in knowing how to work through some of those issues. It can't be done just by law enforcement. It's going to require many stakeholders from different agencies, whether it's the Veterans Administration, whether it's mental health, McKenzie Hall. There are, out, there are people out there that we can go to and help get help to, to solve these problems. I'm asking for your vote consideration uh, in March in the primaries, and if, uh, if that goes well, uh, your vote in November. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Anyone else? You're just in time, Andy. Andy, it's his turn. Andy, you have anything to say? We're at that part of the meeting. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Comments on the public and committee reports, none of the night, and dropping down to resolutions. Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mayor. We'll start off here with resolution 19-18R, a resolution amending resolution 19-17R, the amended capital improvement program for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Council? So move. Second. Yes, sir, when you're ready. Uh, explanation of this resolution, uh, we are amending the CIP again, and this one is the amending for the clarifier purchases, which will have some additional uh, ordinances later on in the evening. Council, any questions? When you're ready, Mr. Kitka. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. <clears throat> Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. And Councilman Cook. Yes. Resolution passes seven to zero. And when you're ready. Important. Bear with me just for a second. No rush. Take your time. You got all night. Yeah, okay. Ordinance 19-33, an ordinance supplementing certain appropriations in New Carlisle City Ordinance 19-04. So moved. Got it, yep. okay. An explanation of this ordinance, this is to uh, supplement certain appropriations in our city ordinance, and this is for new vehicle purchases. Council, any questions? Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. And Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Ordinance passes seven to zero. Thank you, sir. Ordinance 19-34, an ordinance providing for the transfer of funds from the general fund to the street and cemetery fund of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. So moved. Second. Second. So Mr. Vice Mayor. Vice Mayor. Vice Mayor. I thought I heard a lady who said who was second. I think there's the side. Oh, I did. Yeah. Oh, I heard. I heard it. You, she, 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 she can have it. Okay, she can me. have it. So second was uh, Councilwoman Eagleson. I just I heard Bill first. Yeah. Okay. Okay. An explanation of this ordinance. This is additional uh, legislation for the vehicle purchase. Uh, but we're taking $50,000 that is allocated for a different project in the general fund and splitting 30000 of that into the street fund and 20000 of that into the cemetery fund, again, for new vehicle purchase. Council, any discussion or questions? When you're ready, sir. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. And Councilman Shammy? Yes. 
Ordinance passes seven to zero. <clears throat> ordinance 19-35, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for liability insurance with USI Insurance Services, LLC, representing the public entities pool of Ohio for the administration of said policy. Council. So moved. Second. That was a tie. That was a tie. We'll give this one to the vice mayor. Okay. And an explanation of this ordinance, this is a yearly ordinance we do, uh, and it has to do with getting uh, liability insurance coverage for the city of New Carlisle. I am happy to report this is uh, a one, two, three, four, th three, three years in a row that we see any reduction in cost. Council, any discussion? Four years, sorry. Mr. Mayor. Sir. How much are we saving this year, Mr. Bridge? Um, the do, 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 um, 4,636. Okay, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. When you're ready, Mr. Kitko. All right. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. And Councilman Shammy? Yes. Ordinance passes seven to zero. Ordinance 19-36E, an ordinance providing for the transfer of funds from the Wastewater Construction Fund to the Wastewater Capital Contingency Fund of the City of New Carlisle and declaring an emergency. <coughs> Council. So Second. And an explanation of this ordinance, uh, we have a clarifier project that we need to get uh, uh, started and it's our wastewater plant. Uh, this uh, ordinance um, allows us to transfer some funds from other wastewater funds into a line item for that purpose. Council, any discussion? When you're ready, sir. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Emergency ordinance passes seven to zero. Ordinance 19-37E, an ordinance supplementing certain appropriations in the New Carlisle City Ordinance 19-04 and declaring an emergency. Second. Oh, I'll let Ms. Eggleson have it. Councilwoman Eggleson was second? Yes. I'm not sure. And an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this is uh, because we are increasing the amounts of uh, a couple different funds that we are using for the clarifier purchase. So anytime that we increase or decrease those amounts, we have to do the legislation for such. Thank you, sir. Council, any discussion or questions? When you're ready. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. And Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Emergency ordinance passes seven to zero. And last but not least. Yep. Ordinance 19-38E, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a financing agreement for full or partial payment of the wastewater primary number one clarifier replacement project and declaring an emergency. So moved. Mr. Bridge. Uh, this ordinance, an explanation, uh, for the clarifier project, we will be financing uh, part of that, but due to the amount of that financing, it is over my uh, authority to spend. So we have to have legislation in front of council to do so. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Any discussion, council? When you're ready, sir. Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. And Councilman Shammy. Yes. Uh, emergency ordinance passes seven to zero. You want to read off the other business? Can. Uh, Congressman Warren Davidson will hold mobile office hours at the city building 
on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. City offices will be closed Monday, November 11th, 2019 for Veterans Day. City offices will be closed also for Thursday, November 28th and Friday, November 29th, 2019 for Thanksgiving. I'll tell you what, you can give Emily a run for her money. It's the voice. <laughs> How do you want to be here every two weeks being put to council? Yeah. This is why she took off. Right. All these <laughs> you can speak for everyone. We can all hear everything going on. All right. Well, Randy, make that work, would you? I don't have that authority, and he's not leaving my <laughs> full-time staff to be your part-time clerk of council, so we're just going to do that. But. You do both. Um, there's a couple. <laughs> I like you want. Ms. Angleston has something she wants to go over? Um, I wanted to make a motion for council to authorize a charter review committee. Huh. There was a motion made on February 19th that resulted in a split vote due to not having a full council. I'll second it. When is the next council review due? Like in a year. Yeah, in a year. I have some questions. Is it too late? No, it's never too late. Um, Turn review. You got the second. Your second. Um, Ms. Hopkins. Okay. Now I was I was not on council for the um, the vote last time, but I was in the audience. And somebody brought up that we do it how many years? Eight? Every eight. Every eight years. And if we do it earlier, isn't there a cost with it? Mm -hmm. The only cost is when Charter Review brings the information to council, council in turn passes it on to the ballot, and then it goes on the ballot. That's where your money is involved. Mr. Mayor. And if we do it early, do we have to do it again? Yes. Um, no. In the 21st? This, this can be up to the charter review to change that. The intent of the original charter was to be every eight years, if not held in between. But it doesn't say that, right? It's very ambiguous at that point. I do believe we got a legal opinion that says you can have it at any point in time, but you must have it every, every eight years. But if you can have it every time, I mean, any time, then every eight years you have to have it again. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I want to avoid. I don't want us to do it twice. Well, I think if, if this new Charter Review Committee were to bring this up, would in turn change that language to state that it would be eight years from the last charter review. That way you would clear up that ambiguous language. Mm -hmm. So in turn, if you were had an emergency situation or a situation that you felt there were items in the charter that needed to be changed, that you could hold a charter review prior to the eight year anniversary then I think this Charter Review Committee could eliminate this language. And if you eliminate it and we vote on it before the eight years, then we don't have to do it again. Is that what you're saying? No. We don't have to do it again in 2021. We right. We eight years from the time you just reviewed it. Right. Okay. And for well, that's under the impression that it, I mean, I, he, he's correct partially. The other portion of this is it has to be voted on by the citizens. So if you guys have this uh, work set, uh, charter review now, like next week, and they want to take that eight year thing out, that has to be voted on. So if the voters don't want it, then you're back to going back to the, you have to do it two years after. In 2021. Yeah, you have to go back to okay. and, and more than <clears throat> likely, the charter review would probably bring this to council it would probably go on the November ballot in 2020. That would be my assumption. Yeah, unless they get it done early. Because how many, is there two, there's a, how many elections are next year? Primary, Primary and general. March and November. 
Yeah, so they I, won't meet the March. So they'll have to go in the November. November. Yeah, it would. I'm going to be honest with you. I doubt very much whether the charter review, even if you were to pass it tonight, would probably get together until after the first of the year, after the holidays. And I doubt whether or not they would even be able to get this thing put together in time mm -hmm. to meet our deadlines for the 2020 election. Well, here's my question. The Charter Review Committee, that's a committee of your citizens brought up. Mm -hmm. Is council allowed to tell them what they want changed? That seems like to me, if the, once the Charter Review people get together, they go through the charter and they decide what they want to change. If they don't want the five years out and they want to keep it every that's eight years, correct. council can't instruct a Charter Review Commission to do anything. Correct. But, but I think council can only when it comes to us. When it comes to us, it. we can we can change, we can change we can it change around. It. You can do what? Council can change it when they bring it. Council to us. can change. Yeah. In other words, if the charter review sends it to us that they are not going to do anything with that eight-year rule. Mm -hmm. Council has the opportunity at that point to change that language. Mm. Yes. 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 Oh, I, okay. I would yes, assume if any charter. Yeah, but you guys still have to put it to the vote. Right? We still it still goes okay. to so vote. it still goes to the electorate for vote. But we can change anything in the charter that the committee would send to us. Mm -hmm. We can change the wording, take stuff in, put stuff. On. Are you so sure take about it that? Out, put it in. Yes, because we. Wouldn't that defeat the, the purpose we, of the, having the public involved? No. Well, they they are involved for ninety percent of it. We get like 10% of it, and then the public gets to vote on it. But if the public don't want it, nothing of it happens. And also the attorney, to, uh, to answer, I think, your question on how much does this cost, the attorney also has to be involved right. in the, in the uh, charter review. Whenever we get something, then the attorney has to go over it, and they will have it. You, know, you don't know how long they would have it or how much that would cost. So it's a little more cost than just the election. And if it's on a, well, more than likely the primary or the general, then yeah, I don't, I, we, would, don't we, would, we wouldn't have to pay for anything. Well, I, I, yeah, I don't know how that works. Yeah. So I know we had to pay for this one. We wouldn't be a special day. election. Yeah, thank you, sure. Hang on just a second. I'll get to you. Mr. Shammy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so what Mr. Cook was saying, if, it, if, it, if it's delayed and we can't get on November's ballot, why even do, I mean, I'm all for it, yeah. It'd be November of next year. Right, but how long does that take for them to? It, as long as they, as long as it This entirely it. depends upon that group of people, how often they meet and how they go through it. In the past, it has been done in probably 60 days, but it can take longer depending upon how thorough you get into this. Who? Hang on just a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm just wondering, you know, if it's a waste of time because of what you were saying. And then just wait until 2021. I, uh, from what I understand, I think I've only been through one of them, but from what I've been told, council's never made it a, a change to what was suggested. I don't know if that's true, but I have heard that. Um, Mr. Cook, did you have something else? Charter reads, such commission shall review the charter of the city and within the time designated by council at the time its members were appointed or within any extensions thereby granted, blah, blah, blah. Um, if any of the recommendations to council, such alterations, revisions, and amendments, if any to this charter, as in its judgment are desirable. The commission shall act in an advisory capacity to counsel regarding charter revisions. After consideration of the recommendations of the Charter Review Commission, council may submit any or all such proposed alterations, revisions, or amendments to this charter to the electors of the city in the manner provided by section 10.03. Thank you, sir. Something yeah, but that would mean they would have to bring, they would have to bring it, but you, so is that, so they get the, together and they recommend the changes to you guys and there's something that you guys wanted that they didn't recommend, mm -hmm. you could go back and say, we want this in there. Right. Even though they didn't originally recommend it. Correct. 
Ms. Hopkins, did you have something else? Uh, yes. Um, I had a, another question, but after what you just said, I, why do we have a review committee then? It's just, it's the way it's written. I mean, I, mean, I know. I was just wondering because right. we can change what they say. But also, um, is it none of the councils allowed to be on the review committee? I don't think so. Council can advise, I believe that they can act in an advisory capacity. In the past, there have been recommended changes brought forth by both city manager and council to the committee. However, it is up to the committee at that point to Who's either accept or reject those recommendations. Who's on the current committee? I'm sorry. We don't, have, we don't have. We don't have a one. committee. It's a it's a volunteer based group, so we would have to put it out there that we want to do that. And then yeah, but I think that I think that committee is governed by the charter as far as got to have X amount of people into. I mean, I don't know. Like if it's like any other board we have, it says you got to do this, you got to be a member of the right. city. So, but the thing of it is, is yearly I up to the boards, the BZA and stuff like that. But the charter commission hasn't been root updated because it's not due to 2021. So is the people who are on it last? How do you? I, I don't. I don't know how it goes. You this basically is. put the notice out, that and then they just say they want to be part of this. Seeking right. applicants for the charter review, uh -huh. and it goes from there. Gotcha. Um, I think there has been as few as probably six, and as high as eighteen. Oh wow! On the past charter review. Sure. Okay. Yeah, it's new to me. I've never done one of these before. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been a part of one. Um, yeah, I, I was thinking what. Chris had said, I mean, if we're coming into the silly season of Christmas and Thanksgiving and New Year's, um, I don't know. I, I mean, if we're only one year away, I would almost think, why not just wait? That's just my two cents, but I agree. Um, I mean, I could be pushing it for November, but. Mr. Mayor. Just a second, sir. Ms. Watson. Um, this is just observations since I've been here and how the charter reads. There's a lot of antiquated things in our charter here that keeps us from being an efficient city. Uh, when, I, when I talk about financing, there's a lot of things in that charter that keeps us from doing things quickly um, and being efficient. So when you create the committee, however it reads in the charter to create the committee, um, it's, it seems that it would be best to have people whether it be staff, at least one person from staff, one person from council, one person to tell the, the citizens what's, what we, what's in there and what it's making difficult for us so they understand why we need some changes done. So I, I think that's important to think about. I also think that the um, way to change this eight year to five year, if you were to say, I think the original, and I wasn't here, but um, to say that it has to be done at least every eight years, but you can do it every year if you choose that things need to be changed. And you can, obviously, it goes to vote and goes to ballot, but I think that would make it so that if something drastically needed to be changed because a law changed whatever, you have that opportunity to do it every year. But it has to be done every eight years, and I think eight's kind of a, a, a large number, mm -hmm. but if you put that at least terminology in there, but leave it open so we can, you know, people, we can do it if we need, if it needs done on, on a more frequent basis. But, but the flip side of that too is though, because every time a new council sat, they're gonna change a chart. I mean, I think it's in there for eight year points, and governments like this, we need to be as open, transparent as possible. So we don't wanna expedite the process and it gets in front of the citizens so quick they don't know it's there. You know, so I think it, it's definitely up for discussion. And I agree with you, there's are parts of that charter that are just like, whoa. But I think it's there for a purpose. I think it's there for every eight years. So like I said, every time a council sat, they're gonna have a charter review commission and try to get something on that the less council didn't want. You know, so, but it's the citizens and how they want the city to go in council, so. <coughs> Mr. Cook? I happen to agree with our finance director. I think there should be, let's say an advisory committee to sit with this charter review because there are certain things that she has brought up in the uh, administration 
that is hampering them from doing their job correctly. There are certain things in the charter that need to be changed that have been brought up uh, by the citizens over a lengthy period of time. And this, let's say, we do appoint a person from the administrative and one or two from council to work with them. These people would not have a voting right on that committee. That would only be for the committee selected to have that right. Yeah, you're going to need probably, need, if not a little more of us over here, and maybe a few of you guys, because we're the ones who do the day to day operations. You know, so I think there definitely needs to be at least two from administration and probably a few from council. Then Absolutely. Two and two. I, yeah. I have no yeah. problem with that. It, you know, yeah. whatever number is yeah. decided upon. Okay. And there's also, I mean, here's the thing, though. I mean, I think, I mean, people need to understand there's, when you look at our code, we have a charter, which is a very small portion of our actual overall codes. Like our code, our codified ordinances are gigantic. A lot of the operational issues come from the codified ordinances, not the charter. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that whatever we want and we want to change is actually not in the charter because if it's not in the charter, council can change it by vote on themselves by two reads. You know, so the operational things, I think some of a scenario I kind of want to go after uh, that makes it a little more efficient for us, but also not so transparent that the public doesn't know what's going on as well. But I think we need a good dis discretion between the charter versus regular codes. Well, as, as we all know, the Ohio Revised Code changes daily. And if you're not keeping up with the Ohio Revised Code, we're getting further and further behind, and the eight-year time frame has got us way, as she has pointed out, antiquity. I don't, I don't want to interrupt you or, or seem like I'm... Um, the Ohio, our codes are updated every year with ORC. But the charter's not up. Yeah, but the charter has no impact on state code. Our charter has nothing on our state code. When we, every year when I do the codification update, it brings in the updates that are done to the ORC. Mm. But you're not gonna find anything on our charter, and I'm, I'm going on a limb when I say this, and nobody quote me on this, the charter is not really bound by state law. As far as the charter, this tells you how we operate our own city here. It doesn't have any impact on the ORC. If you look and at I, our, if you look you, at our you and I can have this discussion at yeah, a later date. But let's move on. Well, if you look at the charter, as that's about our financial procedures and stuff like that, that is, that I mean, when you say okay, we'll talk. We'll talk later. Okay, so we got a motion and a second on the floor, correct? Who was the first? Uh, the first was Miss Eggleston, and I do not remember. Mr. Cook was the second. Mm -hmm. I would, uh, oh, Mr. Mayor, sir. I would like to see uh, this to be brought up again at the first of the year, the, because we're not going to do anything till then anyways. So I don't see or understand the need to do the vote tonight. In fact, I would even move to table it until the first of the year and then bring it up in January and try to get something <clears throat> done for next November, if possible. Mr. Cobb, what do you think? Do what? what, what what's your opinion? <laughs> You've got a motion to second on the floor. You've got to take the vote. We can still table it. Not unless they withdraw their motion. No, you can table a motion. Robert, no, you can't. Not if there's a second. Okay. So, a motion made. Mr. Cook. Any thoughts? Or? I'm sorry. Any thoughts before we vote? I see nothing at all wrong with starting the procedure now and getting the committee ready to go after the first of the year. You know, we've, we've delayed this for almost a year. Okay. And I think Linda had brought it up some time back that we needed to update this charter, which I have been strongly an opponent, uh, a proposed person to have this charter update. I've served on the last four or five. And if you have not worked with this charter <coughs> and seen the inequities in that charter, then I think you're going to get a rude awakening. 
All right. Uh, we heard what you said. I, I can see it both ways personally, so I guess I'll just have to make my decision here shortly. Um, Mr. Same Chairman? way. Okay. Ms. Hopkins, do you have anything to add? Well, if we take a vote on it. We've been talking about this for a while. No. Yes. If we take a vote and start now, do you think we'll get people during the Christmas season and stuff? We don't have to do it right this second. Oh, I mean, okay. it could, we could wait till after January. Um, That's all. Ms. Sagos, anything else? No, I, I think we can go ahead and pass it now. Can I ask a question? Um, let's, let's, let's do, okay, go ahead. What are some of the things you guys are wanting to change? This is other, other than the five, the five to eight years thing, what are some of the concerns? I mean, you don't answer, I'm just curious to know where, where your guys' opinions are with let's, the charter. Let's do, I, I, I'm, I'm right there with you, but we've been on this for almost 20, <coughs> 20 minutes now. It's, I mean, unless you want to spit a few things out that you have concerns on. I think one of the valuable ones that has been brought up that some of the citizens want us to go to a direct election of mayor. Mm -hmm. That I think is number one. I don't propose that myself, but I'll go along with what the citizens want. I think again is this eight year factor. I think that's pretty predominant. And that's just two right off the top of my head. Okay. Let's go for the vote. Mr. Kitko, please, if you will. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. No. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Shammy. No. Councilman, Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. And Councilwoman Eggleston. The charter review motion passes five to two. Thank you, sir. Um, I'll just say real quick, I don't want to get back on this too long. Um, we didn't let everyone speak because we were past the public speaking part, but uh, from the majority of the room, it looked, that was part of my decision. Can't have so thank you. Um, anyways, moving on other business before we wrap up tonight. Uh, tomorrow, big day for New Kalawin, a very important day. Uh, tomorrow, issue 20 will be on the ballot for the city of New Kalau, which is pretty much a carbon copy of our current uh, half percent increase on the city's income tax, which is what we use to pay for our police deputies uh, for the city of New Kalau. So it's very important. Uh, you know, so if, if you're for this, uh, if you're for this, please uh, spread the word and just you know make sure that people, if you are aware of it and know a lot about it, you know, and people have questions, maybe your neighbors fill them in on what it is and what it means for our city. And that is all I have. Anybody else has anything? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. Move to adjourn. Second.